it's Brady welcome back to my channel thank you so much for joining me if you are brand new here hi hello welcome we are a family of four it is myself my husband and our six and three year old girls plus a 76 pound crazy dog life's busy I just wrapped up another semester of college my husband works crazy hours the kids just went on Christmas break but we've been doing distance learning and it has been a wild ride so I thought I would bring you along for another day of vlogmas and just kind of show you some of the stuff that I am making um, cookies and candy wise for Christmas and although we're not having our big normal huge gathering well I mean they're not like huge huge but you know what I mean we're not having our normal large gatherings I'm still making all the stuff that I would typically make treats wise and so I thought I'd share that with you um, we made the sugar cookies yesterday I did not get those filmed um, and they're getting into them as I said that. Um, all right, so I didn't get the sugar cookies filmed yesterday, but I'll try to show you what those look like. Um, I might make more, so if I do, I'll show you those. I am planning on making some oatmeal blueberry cookies instead of oatmeal raisin. I have dried blueberries, so we're gonna do oatmeal blueberry. I've already got that dough made up, so hopefully I'll get a shot for you here in a second of me cooking those and show you what those turn into. I did try the um, oatmeal, like no bake chocolate peanut butter cookies. They turned out really dry with the recipe I used. I don't really know, um, but we'll carry on. <laughs> um, I also made homemade caramels night before last. What is today? Today is Tuesday, the 22nd, and I made these Sunday night. So I'll insert a clip after this to show you how I did that. And um, I'll link Old World Home's video. Her video is down in the description box for you of the exact measurements and everything. It's like a three minute video, super quick. That's where I got the idea from. And they were incredible. So like I said, after this clip, I'll insert that in from Sunday night. And then um, I'll bring you along today. So I may also get some prep done for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. I think I shared with y'all in the grocery haul, which if you haven't seen the latest grocery haul, that'll be uh, linked up above for you. And then at the end of this video, uh, um, the video will pop up for you. But anyways, um, I shared in the grocery haul that we're kind of doing it differently this year. We're not doing a whole lot of cooking, but I still will be doing a large Christmas morning breakfast. And I like to prep ahead of time for that. So I make my hash brown casserole ahead of time and throw it in the freezer. And then that way that morning, I just have to throw it in the oven and it lets it cooks while we open presents. And then I also make homemade biscuits, but I flash freeze them on a baking sheet and then throw them in a freezer bag. And so then that way, just like the Pillsbury Grands biscuits that are frozen, I can pull them out just that easy without having a mess. Um, they're not hard for me, but they do make, you know, a bit of a mess to have another bowl and a spoon and um, my pastry cutter that I cut the butter in with and then rolling it out and cleaning up that flour, you know, just all of that. So they're not difficult, but it's something that is less mess for me to go ahead and get done ahead of time. So that's the plan there. Um, I need to finish up getting a few presents put together. I've got a few deliveries I'm expecting either today or tomorrow as well. Coming down to the wire, <laughs> um, but we're getting there. And yeah, I don't know. I do need to put together a fruit tray for Christmas and a veggie tray. So hopefully I can bring you along for that. And this is just what prepping for Christmas looks like. So I also want to make, oh, Christmas crack, which is like this white chocolate covered cereal and pretzel and peanut stuff with M&Ms in it. I need to do that. Um, I do want to make some snickerdoodle cookies. I want to make brownie M&M cookies, but I don't know if I'm going to get to those or not. Um, and I also want to make peanut butter cornflake cookies, some cinnamon hard candy, and what else was on my list? Oh, and Chex Mix. 
So we'll see of that what all I actually get done today. It's already two o'clock. Um, I got a shower <laughs> and I put makeup on and we went and ran a couple of errands. We had to pick up some things and run to Kroger. Um, but other than that, we haven't gotten a whole lot done today. So I need to get it in gear and get this stuff going. So let's go take a look at how the caramels turned out and how that went. And then I will pop back in with you and we'll start with the oatmeal blueberry cookies after that. Okay, so here we're gonna get started with the caramels. I'm just showing you all the ingredients. You're gonna need butter and sugar and salt and some measuring spoons and vanilla and heavy cream, corn syrup here. And I'm gonna link um, Old World Homes video down below. And I'll also type out the um, measurements for everything that you're gonna need. So I'm just showing you the process here. It is very simple. I took quite a bit of footage. This took me a very long time, um, but it was easy to do. It was just a bunch of waiting and stirring and then waiting and not stirring. Um, so yeah, you're just gonna add your butter and your salt here and your sugar, I almost did that backwards, and the corn syrup. I don't know that it matters which order you do that in, but I'm trying to go step by step here the same way that she did it. So I'm just gonna scrape all that out with a little spatula. And then I've got this over uh, medium low heat here. I'm just gonna melt all of this. And then um, you'll see if you watch the link for her video, kind of the full instructions here, but I'm just gonna let it cook down. And then um, we will add in our heavy cream as well. And you only add in half of it. See here, I'm gonna show you. You only add in half of your heavy cream at first and then you add the other half after it has cooked for a while. So I actually think after this point that I had my heat down too low, um, but if you, kept, if you kept yours at a high enough heat without burning it, then it would probably, this process would go a lot faster for you. <laughs> so I think I had mine too low at one point, and I think that's why it took me like an hour and a half. But I will caution you, it is still gonna take like 45 minutes. It, it does take quite a while. Um, to cook all of this uh, down and to follow the steps in the recipe. It takes forever for everyone to do this. That's kind of the painstaking part here, but it was very worth it and they were so good.
And here I am at this point still waiting. <laughs> Just waiting, waiting, waiting. All right, now that it has gotten to the desired temperature, which again will be linked below and um, in her video as well as typed out for you. But once I've gotten to that temperature, this is the point at which we add in our remaining heavy whipping cream. So you're gonna see me do that and then you stir it in and go from there. Now obviously this other half of the whipping cream is going to bring your temperature down. So then you're gonna bring your temperature back up and then they will be pretty much done at that point. All right, it has come to temperature and I have removed from the heat and I'm just stirring this up really well. And then I'm gonna show you here, I have a buttered dish. I did put the parchment paper in the bottom as well, just to kind of help it come out. But I greased this up with butter very, very well. Poured all of that mixture in there and then you need to let this sit for a few hours um, before you cut it. So this took quite a while to completely cool down, but once it did, Here's what it looks like. And then I just flipped it out of the pan, obviously. Like I said, it came out very well. I did have to kind of peel some parchment off, but you can see it is nice and flexible. Um, and it does get uh, warm from you working with your hands. So if you need to take a break, you can. I'm using a pizza cutter, just cutting mine into strips and then into squares. So I'm just gonna take a moment and hopefully I don't have caramel in my teeth. I just tried one of these. Y'all, these are incredible, um, incredible. So I was very skeptical. This took like an hour and a half of cooking time of my time today, but this is totally worth it. These are gonna be phenomenal and I'm probably gonna do a second batch. So these are great. So I'm going to go back to uh, slicing well, actually, while I'm doing this, let's go ahead and try to take a wax paper. So I just took a regular roll of wax paper. I know on Amazon you can actually get, so see, it's very like shapeable. I know on Amazon you can get like the pre-cut things, but I'm just going to do this. I just cut my own little pieces. Oh, and these are so look at that and you have your own little gourmet candy what in the world y'all i have never but this is amazing okay so i'm gonna go finish these up this is gonna make a lot um on old world homes um video she was talking about she made a hundred of these so i th i definitely think we're gonna get probably get that out of this uh, this is incredible. I am so thrilled. These are so cute. So cute. I mean, my wrapping skills could use some work, but like, so cute. I think the most like monotonous part is I've had to cut out all these little squares because I didn't buy the pre-cut ones from Amazon or somewhere else. Um, but they're totally, totally worth it. And y'all, these are like scrumptious and they're nice and chewy but they're not so sticky that they like stick to your all in your teeth and you can't get it out and it's miserable they're not like that they're just chewy enough they're super buttery they're delicious i am so excited okay 
All right, back to work. Okie doke, so now we are starting with the snickerdoodle cookies. And so I've just got butter, and then I'm going to add in sugar, and then we're going to cream those together. And the recipe that I used for this will also be linked down below in the description box so that you have all the full measurements and instructions. Okay, and so I am creaming this together for quite a while, but you wanna make sure that it, the butter and sugar get you know nice and creamed together and fluffy um, before you add in your other ingredients. All right, and so now in goes the flour. I've already got that pre-measured out and I'm just going to add that in. I am adding in little by little so that you don't have a big flour explosion coming out of the mixer here. <laughs> and then, so, you know, it's just quite a bit of start and stop, start and stop, add some more and keep going until you're totally done.
Okay, so this has completely come together. And so now we're gonna make the cinnamon sugar mixture. Again, full um, measurements will be listed down below, but I've just got like a little cereal bowl here, adding in the sugar, measuring out the cinnamon and adding it. And then we will roll the dough ball, we'll make dough balls and roll them in the cinnamon sugar mixture and get them on a baking sheet and into the oven. Um, the exact temperatures and again, exact measurements, all of that good stuff will be in that recipe linked down below for you. Okay, here they are fresh out of the oven. Here is a batch of those. I did kind of overcook them. You want to make them soft still when they come out. That is the joy of snickerdoodles, but these were still delicious even though they were a little overdone. And then we are moving on to the oatmeal blueberry cookies. And these take, um, this is actually a recipe for uh, regular oatmeal cookies. However, I did not have raisins. I only had dried blueberries and I actually think these made them even more delicious. So here we're creaming together butter, sugar, and brown sugar. And then throughout the rest of this video, because of this angle, it's a little hard to see me add the honey um, and the rest of the, the vanilla and the other ingredients, but that's what I'll be doing as you watch here in a moment. But, um, Yes, it does take honey, brown sugar, and white sugar. So it is kind of a different recipe than I've seen before, but I think it made them extra chewy and delicious and gave them a really good depth of flavor here.
Okay, so now that the blueberries are incorporated, that was our last step. And I'm just going to wrap this in plastic wrap and sit it in the fridge. And then here in a second, you'll see me scoop these out. Yep, so I let them sit in the fridge for, you know, 30 to 45 minutes just to get them cool. It helps them stay together better as they bake. And, um, you know, so, I mean, you can leave them in there longer, but then you're going to need to pull them back out on the counter and give them a couple of minutes just to take a little bit of the chill off. Okay, so now moving on to the Christmas crack, and I'm just adding in a bag of Cheerios from a 12 ounce box, some peanuts, some pretzels, and then I'll add some M&Ms as well as we mix it together, coated in the vanilla almond bark, or you could use melted white chocolate, whichever you prefer. Okay, so another tradition of ours is to have apple julep on Christmas morning, so I'm just prepping that. You need lemon juice, orange juice, pineapple juice, and apple juice. Um, so I'll try to find the exact recipe for that too, but you're just going to see that I just kind of eyeball it here.
Okay, and so now that that is done, I'm gonna move on to the fruit tray. So you are seeing me slice up a pineapple and then we will um, move on to the other fruits and you'll see me kind of play around with it and assemble things how I want them. Um, just taking a little bit of time to play around with it.
here is a look at the fruit tray that I put together. So, you know, I mean, it's not like perfect professional, but I am loving it. So we've got some grapes, some Granny Smith apples, caramel dip, strawberries, cantaloupe, and pineapple. I don't know why that word escaped me for a moment, but that's it. So I'm going to individually wrap the tops of these ramekins and then I will also then cover the whole thing in wrap, plastic wrap, and put it in the fridge. This is like the one, maybe two times a year that I use um, plastic wrap. So I've had this one for literally years. Um, but we're gonna get that wrapped up and make some space for it in the fridge. Then I think we're gonna move on to the veggie tray. My camera battery died on the GoPro, so I'm actually just using my phone right now, but, um, if I don't get process, if I don't get to capture the process of the veggie tray, I'll at least show you what that looks like. And so another thing that I like to do every Christmas morning as part of our big breakfast is to have a uh, hash brown casserole. So I'm just mixing that up here. I put garlic powder and a little salt and pepper in mine as well. And then that's just the sharp cheddar cheese, a bag of frozen hash brown potatoes, either the shredded or the diced, and some sour cream and cream of chicken soup. I'll try to leave the exact recipe down in the description box for you. And then I just add in here, um, I spray a disposable pan just so that it's easy to prep, throw in the fridge, then pull out the Christmas morning, throw in the oven. And um, you could also freeze this ahead of time, whichever way would work best for you. I just put it in the fridge since I would be using it the next morning. Um, but then you just pour it into your pan, top with some more cheese, and then bake it until um, the potatoes are nice and tender. So obviously it's gonna be less baking time if you're putting this in the fridge like I am and the potatoes are going to have thawed by then. Um, but if you are, you know, pulling it straight from the freezer, of course, it's going to cook longer. Um, so again, just top it with some cheese. I have also seen people do like crushed cornflakes, um, but you know, we just left it plain with just that. I also like to add a little onion powder or minced onion when I mix up the mixture. You can add chopped onion, uh, you know, like a fresh onion. If you did that, I would probably do like half of a medium onion added to this, but my family um, is not a big fan of that. So I just keep it with like the onion powder. I'm gonna do two layers of foil here, wrap it up, label it, and get this into the fridge. Okay, so now that the hash brown casserole is in the fridge and all assembled, I'm going to prep some biscuits. I just mixed up um, some self-rising flour, shortening, butter, and milk. You could also use buttermilk here. And I'll try to get um, a recipe or at least type out um, the measurements in the description box for you. But you have to know that uh, like everything else, I just kind of wing it. I don't have an exact recipe. And then you're just going to want to flour your surface, dump out that dough. You just barely want to mix this till everything comes together after you cut in your butter. Um, so you'll take flour, the self-rising flour, cut in your cold butter and your shortening. You can use all butter, all shortening, or a mixture of both like I do. And then you are going to cut that into your flour. Uh, you can do that with a fork, with your fingers, with um, an actual pastry cutter, which is what I did. They're very inexpensive. I'll leave one linked um, from Amazon for you in the description box, as well as some silicone mats like this. They're very helpful. Um, so you just want to get them till that mixture um, is just combined when you add your milk. And then you will dump that out onto a floured surface. Again, like I was saying, you know, it just is helpful to have the silicone mat there or something like that. I'm using a stemless wine glass because I don't actually own a biscuit cutter as often as I make biscuits. It's probably something I should own, but I don't. You can do, you know, anything to get that. Um, you're just going to want to 
slide side to side a little bit. Do not twist. If you twist, I've always been told that that, you know, keeps your layers from rising. So it's up to you. I've done it both ways. I definitely think they rise more when they're touching on the pan and when you do not uh, twist as you cut them out. So it's up to you. Um, but that's what I do. And then I'm just going to throw this pan into the freezer and, um, then they will, once they flash freeze flat like this, I'll just take them back out and put them all into a Ziploc bag and then throw the Ziploc bag into the freezer. And then that whole homemade mix, you know, is all cleaned up before Christmas morning. And then I'm just going to kind of lightly pat out the rest of the dough and, you know, you want flour there, but just, you know, don't overwork the dough. That's the key to keeping them tender. And, um, yeah. Then I'm just going to cut out some more and get a pan full into the freezer. And then um, here I'm not pushing them together, but when I bake them, I will make them touch so that they rise pretty well. And I cook them from frozen just like the Pillsbury Grand's biscuits. All right, y'all, so that is the end of this video. Here's a look at those frozen biscuits before I threw them into a Ziploc bag for the freezer. Here's our homemade caramels that we made, and those were a huge, huge hit. They were delicious, as well as a look at the snickerdoodle cookies. And I'm also going to show you a kind of a final look at some of those blueberry oatmeal cookies. Again, all these recipes are linked in the description box below. Here was our veggie tray, just shaped like a Christmas tree. My battery died. <laughs> and then there's our fruit tray. So thank y'all so much for joining me. I'll talk to you in the comments down below. Bye-bye.